distance, displacement, speed and velocity. In this special lecture, you will learn something very awesome about different parameters of kinematics. I will also teach you some unique concepts which 90% students are not understanding. Firstly, let me teach you the basic concept of distance and displacement. Let's consider two houses. These houses are connected by two different roads. Let this road is road number 1 and this road is road number 2. Now one person uses this first road to go from this house to this house. Let he travels 100 meter. While the second person uses the second road to go from this house to this house. Let he travels 70 meter. Now listen carefully. We call road number 1 as distance. So 100 meter is a distance between these two houses. While we call road number 2 as displacement because it is shortest and directed path from one house to another. So 70 meter is displacement. According to these facts, we define distance as the total path covered by a body in a given time is called distance. Let me repeat it. The total path covered by a body in a given time is called distance. It is denoted by different letters like S, X, M, etc. Its S a unit is meter. While we define displacement as the shortest and directed path traveled by a body is called displacement. Let me repeat it. The shortest and directed path traveled by a body is called displacement. It is denoted by S arrow, X arrow or M arrow. Its S a unit is also meter. In this lecture, I will use S for distance and S arrow for displacement. Remember that distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity. Now here, if I write S is equal to 100 meter or S arrow is equal to 70 meter, can you differentiate between them? Well, S is equal to 100 meter is a distance and S arrow is equal to 70 meter is a displacement. Here, let me teach you one important question. Why distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity? Well, consider the previous example. We know that road 1 is a distance and road 2 is a displacement. Now listen carefully. Let two cars are moving between these two houses. Here, at this point, the direction of the car is like this. At this point, the direction of the car is like this. And at this point, the direction of the car is like this. So we say that the direction of the car is constantly changing on road number 1. Let me repeat it. The direction of the car is constantly changing on road number 1. Thus road number 1 has no proper direction. It is a scalar quantity. Therefore we say that distance is a scalar quantity. On the other hand, at this point, let the direction of the car is like this. At this point, the direction of the car is like this. And at this point, the direction of the car is also like this. So we say that the direction of the car is not changing on road number 2. Let me repeat it. The direction of the car is not changing on road number 2. Thus road number 2 has one proper direction. It is a vector quantity. Therefore we say that displacement is a vector quantity. So note it down these important points. Now let me teach you the basic concept of speed and velocity. Well, it is super easy. We define speed as the rate at which an object covers distance. Remember that in physics, the word rate usually means divided by time. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. We denote speed by V. So V is equal to S upon T. The SI unit of speed is meter per second. We have already learned that distance is a scalar quantity. So speed is also a scalar quantity. On the other hand, we define velocity as 
the rate at which an object covers displacement. We know that rate means divided by time. So velocity is equal to displacement upon time. We denote velocity by V arrow. So V arrow is equal to S arrow upon time. The S unit of velocity is also meter per second in a proper direction. We have already learned that displacement is a vector quantity. Hence velocity is also a vector quantity. Thus remember that speed is equal to distance upon time and velocity is equal to displacement upon time. Here, let me teach you one important concept. Why we need to study speed and velocity? Well, consider two cars. Let the speed of this car is 30 meter per second and the speed of this car is 40 meter per second. Notice speed that shows this car covers 30 meter distance in one second while this car covers 40 meter distance in one second. Here, if I ask you 30 meter per second or 40 meter per second in which direction? Well, speed cannot answer this question because speed is a scalar quantity. It only shows how fast or slow an object is moving. So here comes the part of velocity. We can see that these both cars are moving towards right. Thus I say velocity of this car is V arrow 30 meter per second towards right and the velocity of this car V arrow is equal to 40 meter per second towards right. Therefore remember that speed only shows how fast or slow an object is moving. It doesn't show the direction of motion like V is equal to 30 meter per second or V is equal to 40 meter per second. While velocity show how fast or slow an object is moving plus it also shows the direction of motion like V is equal to 30 meter per second towards right and V is equal to 40 meter per second towards right. Now let me teach you different numerical problems of distance, displacement, speed and velocity. To learn all these numerical problems, you must understand the concept of parameter. For example, consider this circle. Now if I ask you to find its parameter, how can you calculate it? Well, I take a loop and then I wrap it around this circle. The total length of this loop is equal to the perimeter of the circle. Let the length of this loop is 1.3 meter. So the perimeter of this circle is 1.3 meter. Thus remember that perimeter is the length of a boundary of any shape. Let me repeat it. Perimeter is the length of a boundary of any shape. Now consider a circle. Let this man starts walking from point P, move around the circle, and come back to point B. Find its distance, displacement, speed and velocity. Well, the person is walking on the boundary or perimeter of a circle. We know that the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. Thus the distance of the person S is equal to 2 pi r because he has walked on the boundary of a circle. Secondly, remember this important point. If initial and final position are the same, displacement is zero. Because we say that body is not displaced at all. Here, the initial and final position of the person is P, so its displacement is zero. Thirdly, speed is equal to distance divided by time. Here, distance is 2 pi r. I divide it by time. So speed is equal to 2 pi r upon time. Fourthly, velocity is equal to displacement upon time. Here, displacement is zero, so velocity is also zero. Thus using this concept, we can easily calculate distance, displacement, speed and velocity of any object in closed path like rectangle, its perimeter is 2 into L plus p. Like circle, its perimeter is 4x. Like triangle, its perimeter is a plus b plus c. Thus note it down the perimeter of all these shapes. Now let me teach you exam questions. Consider that 
A car traveled from P to Q in one minute. Calculate its speed and velocity. Well, we know that the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. Here, this is a semicircle. I divide the perimeter of a circle by 2. I get the perimeter of a circle is equal to pi r. The car traveled from P to Q along the perimeter of a semicircle. So the distance traveled by the car is equal to perimeter of the semicircle which is pi r. We know that the radius of the car is 100 meter and the value of pi is 3.142. After calculation, I get s is equal to 314.2 meter. So the distance traveled by the car is 314.2 meter. We know that speed is equal to distance upon time. Here, the distance is 314.2 meter and the time is 1 minute. In 1 minute, there are 60 seconds. After calculation, I get 5.23 meter per second. So the speed of the car is 5.23 meter per second. Now what about displacement? Well, the car is displaced from P to Q in this direction. So displacement of the car is equal to the diameter of the circle. We know that diameter of the circle is 2R. So displacement is equal to 2R. Here we are already given the value of R which is 100 meter. I get displacement is equal to 200 meter. Thus the displacement of the car is 200 meter towards right or towards east. We know that Velocity is equal to s arrow upon time. Here, the displacement is 200 meter and the time is given, which is 1 minute or 60 second. After calculation, I get 3.33 meter per second towards east. So by this way, we can easily calculate distance, displacement, speed and velocity. Finally, let me teach you one of my favorite questions. A ball traveled 4 meter in eastern direction and 3 meter in northern direction in 2 seconds. Calculate its velocity. Well, let me draw a freehand diagram. We know that the ball traveled 4 meter in eastern direction and then 3 meter in northern direction. We can see that this is the displacement of the ball. Now using Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate the displacement of the ball. We know that Pythagoras theorem is hypotenuse squared is equal to base squared plus perpendicular squared. Here displacement is hypotenuse. The base is 4 meter and the perpendicular is 3 meter. Our s is equal to square root 4 squared plus 3 squared. After calculation, I get s is equal to positive negative 5 meter. Remember that Displacement may be positive or negative, but distance is always positive. For example, here in this direction, displacement is positive 5 meter, while in opposite direction, displacement is negative 5 meter. In this case, I select this direction, our displacement is equal to positive 5 meter. We know that velocity is equal to displacement upon time, our v is equal to 5 meter upon 2 second. I get v is equal to 2.5 meter per second. So the velocity of this ball is 2.5 meter per second. Therefore, by this way, we can easily calculate distance, displacement, speed and velocity.